Hi, this is Julian and I'm back with another video on Photoshop CC and about preferences. I'm going to show you a few preferences that you may not think of and still that are very useful. So this is Photoshop CC 2015, but most of them will be uh, compatible with previous versions. So if you go to Photoshop CC and then preferences, you can go to general. If you're working on PC on Windows, this menu will be available going to edit and then all the way at, uh, at the bottom preferences. So because this is a Mac, I'm going to do uh, command K. This is the shortcut for preferences. So first thing first, if you go to interface, uh, what I like to use is a darker theme. Uh, this is available since Photoshop CS6. I like to work in a dark environment so I can see the colors better on my pictures. And then because I'm working in French and in English, you've got UI language. So if you work in a foreign environment, uh, it doesn't have to be French, of course, but it could be, say, you're in Germany and you work in with a German version on Photoshop at work, but you prefer the English one because you're used to the English one. Well, you can switch here if you have several languages installed. Now, you may ask how to install a different language on Photoshop. Say I have the French one or German one or Spanish one, whatever you have, and you want the English one, or you have the English one and you actually uh, you actually want the one, the one from your mother tongue. So that would be uh, the Creative Cloud application. You go to the preferences. So uh, this little icon on the uh, top right corner and then preferences, then creative cloud and then app language. Now, if you go, say you have all your applications uh, installed, well, that would be in French in my case, and I want them in English, I would switch to English and then English International or English North America, the one you want, say International. Then if I go back and go to apps, now I can install all these applications in English. So Photoshop, if it's already installed, in French will be now installed in English. It won't overwrite the one in French, it will just add a new language. So now I'm just going back to preferences, Creative Cloud, and then it was uh, French. So this is the way you install new languages. Uh, you can have, well, I suppose as many as you want. To be honest, I wasn't curious enough to install more than two languages because I work in Photoshop in English and in French because I produce video in French, uh, videos in French as well. But I suppose you can have as many as you want. So it will be available the next time you start Photoshop. So if I click French and then OK, the interface is not going to change. But if I quit Photoshop and then start it again, it will start in French. So I make sure, go back to interface and say English. So this is important for the people that are switching constantly between two languages, the one they use, say, at home, uh, and then the one they use at work. If you work in a foreign environment, if you're working abroad, for example, that is very useful. Now, if you go to file handling, well, since Photoshop CS6, you can now save in the background, which is very, very useful. If you have one reason to switch to Photoshop CS6 or Photoshop CC to be, um, to be precise, say you're still working in Photoshop CS5, this is the killer feature. I mean, one of them, and I'm going to show you the second one just after. Before Photoshop CS6, if you were working on a large, huge file, Obviously, it's going to take, uh, it would take like 10, 15 minutes to save, uh, to write on the disk, especially that back in 2011, before Photoshop CS6, most of the computers were using hard drives and mechanical hard drives. Now we use SSDs, which are the best thing that happened to computers the past 10 years, to be honest, because it's so much faster. Still, for huge document, it can take a while to, uh, to write on the disk. So before Photoshop CS6, you had to wait that the writing, that the saving procedure was finished. Uh, in the meantime, you couldn't do anything else in Photoshop. You had to wait. Now, since Photoshop CS6, you can do other stuff while Photoshop is saving. You could, uh, you could think this is just natural. This is just normal. Well, it wasn't normal before Photoshop CS6. This is the feature that was waiting for so long and it's now available since uh, CS6. So of course, make sure it's uh, checked, save in the background. But the one I wanted to show you is automatically save recovery information every 10 minutes. So since Photoshop CC, and I th think it's Photoshop CC 2014, I'm not too sure because it's quite hard to keep track of all the features version per version. I'm using Photoshop since 1997, so Photoshop's, uh, Photoshop 3 actually. 
uh, so it's been a while and I try I try to keep track of all the versions I've been using and all the new features for each of these versions but I think automatically save recovery is uh, since Photoshop uh, CC 2014 so it means every 10 minutes it's going to save what you're doing if Photoshop crashes or your computer crashes the next time you're going to start it it will uh, it will open automatically the document you were working on on the state you were uh, on the state you were working on on the state you left them well in the state you left them maybe 20 minutes um, maybe 10 minutes uh, away from what you were doing last time if you were painting, doing something very precise, nine minutes after this, you will lose this information. Well, you know what? You can just uh, switch to five minutes, which is great because 10 minutes may not appear to be a long time, but if you were doing something very, very, uh, very boring and very precise and you don't want to do it again, well, you know what? It's not going to take a lot of, of resources on your computer. Switching from 10 to 5 minutes is not going to take, it's not going to have a huge impact on your computer. So why not just switching to 5 minutes? And now if Photoshop crashes, it will restore the document 5 minutes ago in the state it was five minutes ago, which is great. Now, if you have a very low-end computer, a slow computer like a netbook, you're um, in a trip somewhere, you have to work on a, on a document, but it's not your workstation, it's like a lightweight computer, like a thin laptop, and you don't have the horsepower uh, to work on this document and have it saved every five minutes, well, you can do the other way around and make uh, and make Photoshop work every 15 minutes, 30 minutes or one hour to have it saved automatically and if something happens, well, it will uh, recover the document in the state it was maybe 10, 15, 30 minutes or an hour ago. If you're working on a workstation on a decent computer, I would say anything with 8 gigabytes of RAM, then you can switch uh, safely to 5 minutes. It's not going to have a huge impact and it will probably save a lot of work uh, if something happens. So Photoshop is very stable but sometimes um, you can have a crash for some reason. Well, now let's go back to, no, let's go back. Let's go to performance, not go back. And let's go to performance, which is the next thing I want to show you. Memory usage is going to allow you to uh, increase or decrease the memory usage for Photoshop. If you're working only on Photoshop, like monotasking, then maybe you can increase. Um, I, would, uh, I would say not more than 90%. So between 70 and 90%, but this is only if you're working on Photoshop all day long. Like this is the only thing you do, Photoshop, nothing else. Uh, well, you may think if I work with my browser opened because I need to check my mail or maybe go for some footage or find stock shot or whatever textures on, on Google images. Well, you know what? Google Chrome can take a lot of RAM and it's very CPU consuming. Most of the time if you're working on the laptop and you check the battery status on the, um, on the corner, it will say that the uh, most demanding applications energy-wise will be Photoshop and Chrome. So don't think Chrome is something light, you will need RAM for this. So if you're working with Chrome open all the time with a lot of tabs, don't increase the RAM for Photoshop. Let your machine breathe a little bit because Chrome will need it. So 70% is the sweet spot. But if you're working on Photoshop like offline uh, in your own little world and this is the only thing you do all day long or maybe for a session uh, session for four or five hours, the only thing you do, you may want to increase your RAM and have more RAM available for Photoshop. Now, if it's the opposite, like you have a crazy multitasking setup and you work with After Effects, Premiere, a lot of tabs in Chrome, Mail, whatever you have, uh, you will need more RAM for the other applications, not just Photoshop. So you may want to decrease this setting. So, well, for me, the um, default one, 70% is the sweet spot. Uh, I would say not this one. Yeah, don't put 70 in here. That would be silly because that would, de that would say, uh, that would tell Photoshop use 70 meg uh, of, of RAM, which is of course not possible. Now, the only, uh, the, the other setting I want to show you is history states 200. Uh, by default, we have 50. Uh, it used to be 20. And I think they changed uh, the setting for 50 um, when it was Photoshop CC 2014. It's, it's recent. Um, like 10 years ago, we had 20 and we had 20 because most of the computers didn't have much RAM and more RAM was actually something expensive. Now, most of the computers have eight gigabytes or more, even a uh, low-end laptop, not the very low-end, low like $3,400. 
but anything above six hundred dollars eight hundred will have eight uh, gigabytes of ram and a fifteen hundred dollars laptop will have 16 gigabytes of ram so you can safely switch to 200 history states it means you can go back 200 step before you can go i think the maximum is 999 so like a thousand it's it's way too much i mean i think it's not um it's not very clever because you're gonna fill up your ram and to be honest if you have to go back 999 steps back it means you did something um you may you, you change ideas you, you completely change your your idea you want to start fresh with a new document or i don't see the point of going back a thousand times in your document well well if you have to you can set it here i would say anything between 200 and 500 is a sweet spot if you have eight gigabytes of ram or 16 gigabytes of ram if you have less unfortunately then maybe you may want to stick with a default value which is 50 and well to be honest it's comfy to work with but it's maybe not enough so if you have a workstation proper workstation uh, you may want to switch that to 200 this is the setting i use doesn't mean it's the right for you but i wanted to show you it's there and it's going to be applied the next time you start photoshop so if i click if i change to let's say 300 and i click ok it will stick to 200 until i quit photoshop and start it again so if i go to scratch disk uh, this is almost the same logic by default photoshop we use the scratch disk if the ram is filled up so if you don't have any more ram available for photoshop it will use the hard disk to complete the operations it needs uh, whatever you ask it uh, whatever you're asking Photoshop, it's going to do it on the scratch disk, which is by default the one used by the system and used by Photoshop as well. So if you have the, the chance to, um, to get a separate disk, an SSD, of course, don't use um, a mechanical drive for that. You need a fast drive. But if you have a second SSD, which is available to your system, uh, you may want to use it as a scratch disk. So you can check it, check the box and you uncheck the one um, for the system. And the next time you're going to start Photoshop, in case the RAM is filled up, it will use that scratch disk, which is different uh, from the one used by your system, to complete all the operations. So it may, um, it may uh, give your system a little bit of extra power because it's going to scratch on the second uh, hard drive and leave the one of the system available for, well, for the system and, and Photoshop because the system is doing stuff on it as well. So I don't have that because this hard drive, uh, it's not going to tell you here, but I'll tell you because I know it's a USB 3 drive. So of course, don't use a USB 3 drive for that because a USB 3 is going to be 100, uh, well, a mechanical hard drive on USB 3 is going to be around 8, uh, 80 and 100 um, megs per second use an ssd or a pci express ssd that is uh, what you want to do if you want to use that as a scratch disk so separate hard hard disk separate ssd check it and uncheck the one for the system and it will leave the system working on itself and photoshop is going to use a different drive which may give an extra um, extra horsepower for for your operation especially filters actually this is the one that are demanding on the ram the filters like liquify or, or the camera raw filter or anything like a nick effect from google that will use a lot of ram and if the ram is filled up it's going to work on the hard drive now if you messed up the preferences the, uh, the last thing i want to show you is that you can actually reset the preferences so i'm going to quit photoshop and what you're going to see is the preferences that were uh, that were I'll try to reset the one from Lightroom as well. It's actually working for Lightroom as well. So the, the shortcut I want to give you is Alt, Shift, and Command. So Control, Shift, Command on a PC if you're working on, um, on Windows. And you do that when you start your software. So when you start your Adobe app. So, so if I want to reset the Photoshop preferences, I click. And just after I click, I press Shift, Command, Alt. I click Shift, Command, Alt. And then I have this box saying, do you want to delete the Adobe Photoshop searching files? I'm going to say yes. This is actually working for all the Adobe apps like Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, uh, After Effects, Audition, and also Lightroom. Uh, I wasn't sure about Lightroom. That, that's why you, you, you've seen the, uh, the previous screen. I tried it in Lightroom and it's also working in Lightroom. So now all the preferences are back. Now be aware that when you do this, all your preferences are deleted. It means all your custom brushes, swatches, whatever you did um, in Photoshop, also your, 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 your workspaces I was looking for. And so workspaces, swatches, brushes, uh, shapes as well, everything is gonna be deleted 
except what you are saving in your Creative Cloud library, because of course it's online in the cloud, so that will be saved. Uh, it's not going to be touched by the setting, but everything else is going to be deleted. So be aware of that before you do so. Now, if you go back to preferences and say I go to performance, now instead of 200 in history states, I have 50 because it went back to the default settings. All of this is back to default. You can see my interface is back to the uh, light gray uh, theme instead of dark gray. And everything else is back to default. So if something happens to Photoshop, and it, 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 the behavior is a bit weird, uh, you've got crashes, it doesn't work as expected. The first thing the hotline is going to tell you when you call Adobe or when you write a message on the forum is delete your preferences, go back to the, reset, to the um, factory setting default. Uh, Photoshop will be like it was installed um, the first time. Well, hopefully it should be like this. So in case something happens or you messed up the preferences, you start with Shift, Command and Alt and Shift Control alt on a PC, so it's the same shortcut, except you invert uh, command and control, of course. Okay, so this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, these preferences, uh, these settings are very useful. You may not think of going, uh, um, having a look at them, but they're actually very useful. So make sure you can spend uh, a few minutes to, uh, to check what's in the preferences. Now, if you can check my page, facebook.com forward slash Julien Ponce UK, you will find all the news about what I'm doing, about photography, cinema, video games, what's inspiring me. And of course, my video tutorial production. You may see some messages in French because I also post in French, but you will see, of course, uh, post in English. If you check my website, which is actually under construction as, as I speak right now, but when you go and see it, you will see my official website for English tutorials on Photoshop and Lightroom and of course my portfolio. Also my YouTube channel, you may uh, watch this video right now on YouTube but maybe something else if it's embedded on my website but also on YouTube. My channel is youtube.com forward slash Julien Post TV and you can see all the playlists going to playlists. Uh, you will find playlists on um, Lightroom, on Photoshop as well and of course on After Effects. So I hope you enjoyed it and I see you in the next one.